You know, when our Father says He'll lead and guide us, He really means it. <laughs> when our Heavenly Father says He, we have no need to ever worry. And that when He tells us we're more important than the birds, and that He'll care for us, my brother, my sister, I just want to testify that that is the truth. Our Heavenly Father has proved it to me time and time again. Time and time again. Just this morning, we asked the Father, you know, we, we need to change. We want to see something different. We want to see a different outcome. And we're trusting you and believing you. And so, you know, we're going to go on the road. Every time that we've ask God to lead us and we've taken time away from ourselves and the hustle and bustle of the world and just gone on an adventure <laughs> and God's leading promising to seek him you know he's never failed Alan and I he's always showed up and uh, this morning when we left where we were at we left home and we came we didn't know where we would be staying tonight or if we would need to boondock because you know it's 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 late July. Well, yes. It's there's one more week maybe. And you know, we're in northern Montana and there really only are eight weeks of summer that you can camp in Montana and do it with a lot of fun at the lake. And so that would be all the weeks of July and all the weeks of August. And so July is a very busy month for camping in uh, Montana, especially this far north. And so, but, you know, we believed God and we said, well, even if we need to boondock, we're going to go out and seek you. We're just going to take this time. And we know, we know that you'll meet us where we're at and you'll guide us. And so, of course, he showed up this morning. We didn't even make a reservation at any park. We had no idea where, where how far we would drive or you know, where we'd be staying. We kind of meandered through and just took our time and took our breaks. You know, we didn't drive super, super fast, and yet still we made it a pretty good distance. When we started feeling like we were ready to get off um, the road, and it was still daylight, you know, and there's a lot of daylight here in the Pacific Northwest because the sun stays up at this side about till 10.30, almost 11, and where we came from, almost 11.15. I'll wait to talk. This is a nice country road. Here comes a motorcycle. How cute. That's, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful sunset. Anyways, as, as I was saying, we didn't know where we were going to camp, you know, with the RV. And we just, we knew it would be busy season, but we trusted God. And so when I got ready to pull off, we started to go to one RV park um, and just pull in and see if they had an opening. And then we just, we missed it. Like we missed the exit. And so we drove another hour, I would say. And uh, Alan wanted to try out this little RV park that he saw. And so, you know, we really didn't have any super hopes of them having a spot. Because when I checked real quick online, when we pulled off on the exit, it said three, two, and then it said one reservation waiting. And so, and it's, it's a pretty little spot, but Alan felt very, very confident. And so we, we come in down the road and, uh, it's this beautiful little country campsite. I don't want to really put anybody's vehicle or anything in it, but it's on this little cute little country road. It's farmland. You can kind of see. I haven't seen a car in about 15 minutes, but of course a motorcycle just went by, but it's just beautiful. It's farm country up here. And it just testifies the glory of God because when we arrive, not only is there a spot for us, it's a pull through spot because we're not planning on staying for long, just overnight. And not only that, they tell us that we're members of their VIP program and our, our campsite's half off, even though this is not a, a discounted site, obviously. Well, Helen says, okay, and uh, he comes out to the truck and tells me, I mean, something like this would normally run about 120, one, even one up to 130 or 40 up here in, in this part of Montana, because this is like elite kind of glamping. Helen comes out of the car and he says, uh, we're figuring we're going to have to drive down the road. This is still earlier, about seven. The sun was still up. Six o'clock. Oh, it wasn't even seven. Thank you. Holy Spirit is about six. 
And so Alan says, well, we're part of their VIP program. So our evening stay is half off and we have another free stay wherever we want of one of their properties like this. And also we have a pull through site and this guy named Alan's going to take us right there. We're pulled up, hooked up, everything ready in 15 minutes. I fry us some breakfast potatoes and make us some western omelets, Denver omelets with some jalapenos and stuff, and onions, and Alan wanted fried bologna sandwiches, so we eat real quick, and uh, Alan gets a shower and is laid down before it's even 8 o'clock, as if that's not enough, I mean, everything just went so well for us not planning, and of course, that's the Holy Spirit, remember when he's leading us, and he's calling us to take a retreat with him, he will lead and guide us, so not only that, but he gives us this beautiful spot for a third of what it should cost. I, I end up witnessing this just most beautiful sunset. And I was sitting here, you know, thanking him. And I remember that I had told him, Father, help me always, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, help me always to glorify your holy name. And so how could I miss this opportunity to glorify the goodness of God, to testify that here we are, we just get up this morning, we're at home, and we're like, you know what? We need some time away with God. We need a retreat. And um, we need to, you know, take some time and just go spend some time with God. And so we just, you know, pack up, gather some stuff. We get in the camper totally, you know, I would say not anything planned or super prepared, but believing God. And we leave. And uh, before six, we've had our supper the camper set up. Not only that, but he's put us in this beautiful site. And then I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in this well-mowed area, but near this beautiful countryside without a mosquito in sight. Thank you, Jesus. That's only Jesus that could do that. And just looking at this, you know, fire in the sky night, and the temperature is beautiful. It's a beautiful summer, you know, Montana summer evening. And as always, the air just smells so clean. There was a time in my life, and this just testifies the goodness of God, that I used to tell myself that nothing smelled as good as the air in New Mexico after it rained, when the rain would hit the desert and then there'd be a breeze in the evening. And of course, up, of course I grew up very poor, and we just had swamp coolers at that sometimes, and many times we didn't even have anything like that and used a wood burning stove and you know I, I grew up you know I wouldn't say it as disadvantage but I would definitely say I didn't you know have all the wonderful extra things that I think sometimes people want I, don't, I know I didn't need them because God made sure I had what I needed but I didn't grow up fancy and I just was sitting here glorifying God that you know we're in our beautiful camper we just got up today and, we're, and decided, you know, we're going on an adventure. We didn't plan anything. We asked God to guide us, um, to um, help us to meet him, you know, to just come on a retreat and come and just connect back with him, you know, disconnect from, you know, just when you're around people, you know, you've got neighbors, you've got um, acquaintances, and you're just up close with people. You need to kind of get off the beaten path, you know. Sometimes you get off your little bit of path, but it's all still part of the same trip. And so this this just testifies the goodness of God, one, to find this campsite. But also, after we get settled, our neighbor from the campsite next to us is this wonderful, wonderful woman named Teresa. And she comes over and talks to us. And she starts telling us about that they had to leave this campsite that they had reservations for. That's about, you know, 40 miles up the road. And that the man had been rude and screaming at her daughter and everything else. And that they were lucky to get a site here. Which, because she pulled in and didn't have reservations. And when she starts telling me this, it's the campsite that we almost pulled into, but we drove past. And which is interesting because Alan had slowed down. And of course, how fascinating that this woman, Teresa, in just, you know, chatting, two people chatting, she tells me this story. Right away I know the Holy Spirit has protected me by making sure we missed that, you know, connection and ended up coming here because he knew that you know we would have a VIB credit that he secured for us 
so that it would be just so discounted in this just beautiful spot because of course you know we would have come to this spot and still of course been happy to find it this late in the season not reserved a year in advance like it's required out here but not only that but they welcome us we get a front row pull through spot that's gorgeous we're offered this sunset and then our neighbor comes over and confirms for us by the, by the Holy Spirit living God hey you weren't supposed to be the other one because I had reserved this for you look what I reserved for you and it is Christ because he knows how much I love a country road sunset you know with like the little little fence you know made with um just log split log fence you know the in I just I love that a sunset that he put out I mean I had dinner ready in 15 minutes I was like what am I gonna make and it was ready and fried up in my electric skillet and then just this whole two hours to get to enjoy the sunset and still, you know, not feel exhausted because Alan had started thinking around five, you know, he's like, well, if all the campsites are full, we can get a hotel. And, you know, I really, I was kind of bummed because I was like, oh, we're going to go camping. I didn't say anything, but I was, the Holy Spirit, no, I was disappointed because I wanted to go connect with him in nature and, you know, get away from my regular life, you know, <laughs> and here I was like, oh, I don't want to go to the Hilton, but we were on this adventure so I felt like that's why I agreed um but I inside me in my spirit I was like no I don't want that and then God just delivered all of this a beautiful sunset a confirmation from our neighbor that he was leading and guiding us he was keeping us from being at the wrong campsite not getting to see you know he had a special sunset planned for me and a special time for me and he was he was you know also giving me an opportunity to make good on my promise there might be a car pass by. That'll be that noise, my brother and sister. It's pretty quiet. Somebody's going home to their little, little modest size, little plots of land out here. But just so cute where they put this little RV park. But anyways, what I wanted to say is I want to glorify Jesus Christ. All glory to the spotless Lamb of God. Not only am I still standing, you know, throughout the storm that I got, that God had allowed in my life, you know, the attack of Satan, but I was here to testify that, that through and through he was leading and guiding Alan and I, redeeming the time and just constantly covering us in his protection and that we had no fears. And not only that, but any time that we wanted to reconnect and recenter, all we had to do was just let him know. Because in the busyness of life, in the distractions of life, in the things that we, you know, we must accomplish and get through, we can forget to give God our best. But God never forgets to give us our best. And I testify to that. He never forgets. And all we need to do is ask him and say, hey, I need a, I need to reconnect with you, Father. I want to reconnect. I want to go out into nature. You know, I don't know if people can do that in the concrete jungle, meet up with God, but I know where, where I meet him is out here. You know, prairies and the mountains and the lakes, and I just, that's where I see his hand. I hear his bird singing, and that's where he speaks to me. And like Ezekiel, you know, I go out to the plains, and he, he speaks to me. And I just want to testify to you, my brother, my sister, wherever you are in the world tonight, wherever you are, whatever you are currently facing or have gone through, or are still going through. Our Father is faithful. He's never left you not one time. He's never left me either. And I remember I promised him that I would testify to his goodness, you know, that I would glorify his holy name and that every chance I got, I would witness to it. And oh, I have been faithless, my brother and sister, to that promise so many times. I've missed the mark. I have missed the mark, but he has been faithful. He's remained faithful. And today, he just, he touched my heart, the Holy Spirit touched my heart with everything that he had done today, these these miracles. And I just, I just want to testify, and I'm so grateful that he was allowing me to witness and testify to the wonder-working power of his blood. You know, and when I called on his name, he said, Jesus, show us, reveal yourself. Show us more. We want more of you. We want to be more connected to you. We want to follow you wherever you go. You are a good shepherd. So we're going to take a leap of faith and jump and just go. And here I was getting to testify to this miracle that I don't know what VIP program these people were talking about. But Alan checked and made sure it was us. And he's like, I guess we stayed one time at one, went on vacation. I guess we were on vacation at one of these properties. 
for a long time, for like four weeks, and I guess we got points. And, and so, but that was God, because we didn't know to redeem them. Not only did he bring us to the exact place where we could, but it was, you know, it's, it's a very busy season in Montana to be able to just get up in the morning. You have to have reservations six months in advance. So hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ, God had done this and done all of it. And then gave me this beautiful sunset and it's just, I don't know, it's glorious evening. Tried to sprinkle earlier, but just a tiny bit so I could get to see this. And the Father in heaven knows how much I love fire in the skies, that ice. You know, I grew up in New Mexico and in the summer, this is how the skies would look, but somehow, this place has captured my heart and restored it and I somehow love the fragrance here more than there. But it's only at this time in my life that I understand that's his fragrance. That's his scent. And I'm just so grateful for it. And I just want to testify to you, my brother, my sister. No matter you, where you are in the world tonight, you're not alone. Our Father's with you. He's never left you, no matter how dark it looks. And I know that may want to make you cry, but that's okay. If you're crying, that's the Holy Spirit that you're feeling right there next to you. He sent me to testify. He paints your sunsets. He orders your steps. He is healing you, has healed you. You are healed. I am healed. You are healed. Believe it. Walk in it. Testify to his goodness. Every chance he gets. This is daughter of Judah, and I am testifying to the goodness of God. I bless you, my brother, my sister, with the peace of Christ. I speak Jesus to you. I speak Jesus to your spirit. I say, come alive, dry bones, come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive. I break the spirit of discouragement and entanglement in the name of Jesus. And I break the spirit of Lot's wife for my brothers and my sisters that are looking back. Don't look back anymore. If you keep looking back, you're not going to be able to see what's in front of you and you're not going to get there. You're not going to get there. <laughs> and it makes the journey so much harder. It's hard to go forward when your neck is crooked to the back. Stop looking in the back. Don't look back anymore. I quit looking back and I've never been happier. I know I'm held in the arms of my beautiful Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he wants you to know you are too. Believe it, accept it. Believe it, accept it. Speak it out over yourself. Speak it out over yourself. Recognize it in everything. In the birds. In the circumstance. In the, in the opportunities he provides. Step out in faith. You know, that's what Al and I are on. We're on a faith journey, and he, we got up and we said we want to connect with you more. And only God could have done all these things. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me, my brother, my sister. I just want to tell you, I love you. Jesus Christ loves you. Don't look back anymore. Just don't. Just don't. Just believe. Just go for it. Just, just like this road. You know, let that sun set on all the the hurt and all the pain and all the drama and all the things and then just keep on walking just keep on walking and walk into your new you literally are walking into your new you're there believe it i love you my brother my sister